Hallelujah. I'd like to welcome you. My name is Eddie Scott from uh, Victory Ministries, Florida. And it's just a blessing to be with you today and I, I hope you're going to be encouraged by what I have to share with you today. I've heard uh, Christians, some Christians uh, mention the, the word luck. You know, they'll say, uh, well, that, that was uh, lucky we did this and that. Oh, we're lucky we did that. And, well, luck is uh, not a word that we as Christians should use. Uh, if anything, we are blessed. We are a blessed people. Now, if you would like to turn, uh, or just write it down, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28. We're going to look briefly at that and uh, just go on a little bit further. In Deuteronomy 28, uh, verses 2 through 14, it lists all the blessings that uh, God would just pour out upon us when we're obedient to him and his word. And these blessings, uh, I mean, if this doesn't bring a smile on your face as you read through these things, then maybe you need to go and visit Coco the Clown, you know, or, or something like that. But anyway, uh, I'd rather look at God's word than Coco the Clown. Uh, blessings. Verse 2 starts, And all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you if you shall hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. And it goes on, he said, he'll bless the basket and your storehouse. He'll command the blessing upon you. He'll command the blessing. That, that's awesome. When you just meditate, think about that. God will command the blessing on you. And everything that you set your hands to do, he'll bless. So if you're thinking about business or if you're in business, just know this, the blessing of God is upon your business. As long as you're doing it properly, as long as you're doing it correctly, and doing it lawfully, of course, uh, God will command that blessing upon you, and he'll increase you. In Psalm 115, verse uh, 14, let me just check that out to make sure I'm not misquoting here. Uh, Psalm 115, verse 14, it says, The Lord shall increase you more and more. He'll increase you more and more. That's, that's wonderful to, to think about God just increasing us. He wants to increase us. He wants to bless us abundantly so that we can be a blessing to others. Not that we can just hold it to ourselves and just be so, you know, tightwad, you know, and just keeping all the money to ourselves or whatever he blesses us with. But the blessing comes on us so we can be a blessing. And people will see. It talks about Abraham, that they looked at Abraham and they could see that he was a blessed man. Well, are they looking at you and seeing that you're a blessed man or a blessed woman? They should be. They should be. So anyway, all these blessings are, are, are listed there in Deuteronomy 28. Now I want to focus a little bit on Deuteronomy from verse uh, 15 right through to uh, the whole uh, chapter here of uh, Deuteronomy. It talks about the curses and there can be scary things. In verse uh, 61 of Deuteronomy 28, it says, Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, then will the Lord God bring upon you until they be destroyed. Now that is for, for, for those who are just going to live in disobedience. And obviously this is under the old covenant. God is not out to get you today. He's out to bless you today. So, but considering what it does, what the, explains the, the, the blessings and the curses, we go to Deutero uh, we go to, out of Deuteronomy to uh, Galatians. Galatians chapter 3. And that's just after 2 Corinthians, first book after 2 Corinthians. And it says in Galatians chapter 3 verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us, for as it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. So right there we can see the curse has been already dealt with through Jesus Christ. That the blessing, it goes on to say in verse 14 of uh, Galatians, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. Uh, that's us, we are the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. The blessing of Abraham. And again, if you look back to the Old Testament and just see exactly what Abraham had, he had cattle, he had camels, he had oxen, he had silver, he had gold, which was the currency of that time. It didn't have money as such. But the currency of that time was, was anything you could exchange. Whether it was a chicken, 
to get something, to get potatoes or whatever it was. That was just the currency they used until money got established. But what I'm saying is, the blessing of Abraham is, is ours. If you want to be wealthy and rich, can God trust you with that money? Now that, that's important. Because a lot of people just, the money just goes through their fingers like sand. Because they don't know, know how to manage money. God is not going to bless you with money that you're going to just squander or, 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 or spend foolishly. God wants you to be a blessing so, so you can bless others. So can he trust you with money? But that's not my main point today. My main point is, is talking about the blessing of God. God's will for you is to be blessed. Not to have, you know, no money in your pockets. How can you give to the poor if you don't have money to give them? And that's somebody, that's an area that we need to, we need to focus on. We need to be ministering to people in need, who are, who are, who are in want. And uh, obviously people who are sick, when it says that uh, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, and then we read in the curse of the law, every sickness and every disease is under the curse of the law. But Christ has redeemed us from that. So as far as sickness goes, you should be living a healthy, prosperous life. And I hope you are. So I hope that's encouraged you today. And uh, just remember that Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law, being made a curse for you. Blessings be with you. In Jesus' name.